Hello, in this video I will show you how to install and get started with the Lua programming language on Windows. The video will present two alternative ways in which you can install Lua on your PC. Open your browser and go to the Lua.org website. Click on Download. Now select Binaries. Click on Download. At the time of this recording, the binaries provided here are for Lua 5.4.2 while latest Lua is 546. Choose the version that matches your PC. Most Windows PCs these days are 64 bits. I will download the two 64 bits Lua archives. First one contains just the Lua executable. Second contains the required files you need if you want to be able to extend Lua with C modules. Software evolves and things that worked at the time of this recording may not work in a few months or in a few years. Please check the video description for updates and corrections. Once the download is done, extract the two zip files. You can right click and extract them directly. Optionally, you can remove the zip files once the extraction is done. Move the content of one folder to the other. Now that we have everything in a single folder, let's rename this Lua. Next, I will move the Lua folder to my C drive in a folder named Work. Feel free to use a different location if you want. Let's alter the names of the executables by removing the version number from the names. This will let us write Lua instead of Lua 5.4 when invoking the interpreter. Click on the Explorer bar to reveal the Lua folder path. Select it and copy it. In my case, the path is C work Lua. In the Windows Explorer bar, write environment variables and select edit the system environment variables. Click environment variables. Select path and press edit. Press new and paste the path to the Lua folder you've copied earlier. Press OK in the free windows to register the changes. Open the Windows Terminal. If you are on an older version of Windows, like Windows 10, you can use PowerShell or even the old command prompt. Write Lua and press Enter. If everything goes well, the interpreter should start. If it does not work, watch the video again and check if you missed any step. Sometime you need to close and restart the terminal for the path change to take effect. Let's try a few Lua commands. When you want to leave the interpreter, write os.exit. Next, create a new folder named hello. I will create this inside my work folder, but you can do it wherever you want on your PC. Right click inside the hello folder and start a terminal. If you don't see the terminal as an option, you can press shift and right click. Write notepad hello.lua and press enter. Answer yes when asked if you want to create a new file named hello.lua. Now let's write a simple hello world Lua program. Once you are finished, save the file and close notepad. Back in the terminal, write lua hello.lua and press enter. As expected, hello world was printed. While we could use Notepad to write all our Lua programs, most programmers prefer a specialized editor like Visual Studio Code. Open your browser and search for VS Code. Download the Windows version of Visual Studio Code. Once the download is finished, start the installer. Accept the license and press Next.
Be sure to select both open with code options, this will make your life easier later. Then select Launch Visual Studio Code and press Finish. Now we want to open the previously created Hello folder in VS Code. There are many ways to do this. One way is to right click inside the Hello folder and select Open with Code. Another way is to open VS Code and from the File menu select Open Folder and browse to where your Hello folder is located. Press Trust the Authors if asked. VS Code has an integrated terminal that makes our life easier. You can access the terminal from the terminal menu. For a quick test, write lua hello.lua in the integrated terminal. Now press Enter. As you can see, it is more convenient to have both the terminal and the editor together. Press the extension button from VS Code. Search for Lua and select the Lua language server. This extension will give you suggestions when you write Lua code and it will also warn on errors. Press the install button. Now, let's modify our program to ask the user his name and print a greeting. Run the program and input a name when asked. Next, use VS Code to create a new Lua file named utils.lua. Click on utils.lua and use the split button from top right to let you see in parallel both hello.lua and utils.lua. Let's write a Lua module with a greeting function. The greeting function will receive a name as an argument. Let's return a greeting for the user and the current date. Save the changes you've made to utils.lua. Next, we'll modify hello.lua in order to let us use the function from the utils module. Run the Hello Lua program. Oops, I need to add some spaces. The only disadvantage in my view of the current approach is that we can't use VS Code to debug our program by adding breakpoints and stepping through the code. If you prefer print style debugging, the current workflow is just fine. For the second part of the video, I will show you how to install and use a VS Code extension that let us add breakpoints and do proper debugging inside VS Code. The extension we are going to use is called Lua Debug. Search for Lua Debug in the VS Code extensions. Be careful to pick the one by actboy168 because there are a few extensions with the same name. Once you've identified the extension, press install. The author of the Lua debug extension also included the Lua interpreter. It is pretty convenient to install an editor extension and have everything ready. So why didn't I recommend this approach from the beginning? 
Well, the method presented in the first part of the video will work with any editor, while what I will show you next only works with VS Code. Also, in general, it is better to have more options. VS Code, for example, does not work on older Windows versions like Windows 7 or Windows 8. Press the Run and Debug button from the left toolbar of VS Code. Click on Create a Launch File. This will create a new file for us that we will customize later. Now, select Hello.Lua again and press the top debug button. If everything goes well, the debugger should break on the first line of the script. We can use the Step Over button to go through all the script lines one by one. As you can see, the debugger now waits for us to input a name. Once we do that, you can see in the left debug panel of VS Code, the variable name just appeared. At any point when the debugger is paused, you can interact with the existing script variables, you can modify them, create new ones, and so on. Let's create some new variables and use them in the debug console. You can also invoke any Lua function like the mod functions. You can comment multiple lines from a script by selecting them and pressing Ctrl plus right slash. Next, I will create two new local variables and use this in a new function that I'll add to utils.lua. Let's add a breakpoint on line 7 from hello.lua. Press debug again. Surprisingly, the debugger will stop on the first line of the script while we want it to break on line 7. At any point, you can stop the debugger by pressing the red square from the debug menu. We need to add an extra parameter to launch.json that will inform the extension we don't want to always break on line 1. If we define stop on entry as false, the debugger will not break on the first line of the script, it will only break on a breakpoint we've specifically enabled. Now, the debugger will break as expected on line 7. Step over the next two lines. As you can see, now we have two variables in our script that we can inspect or modify in the debug console. Currently, we are on line 9. Please note that on this line the utils.add function is called. We can use the step into button to go in this function with the debugger. You can also inspect the add function local variables. If we press step over, we are back in the main hello.script. To better see the power of the debugger, we can modify parts of the code while the program is still running. Let's add an extra function in the utils module. In order to be able to use it while the program is still running, we need to copy and paste the function code in the debug console. Now, we can use all functions from utils in the debug console. Let's try the new prod function. Thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe. If you are interested in other programming subjects, please let me know in the comments.